Hey guys, Matthew MarmarInvest.com. It is a beautiful Sunday afternoon. It's uh, raining today and there's a little cold front that's come in. And uh, so I've got my coffee here and um, I'm ready to give some stuff away. So uh, I am very, very blessed. And one of the things that um, I regularly try to do is to give back to other people that maybe have not had the same opportunities that I've had or uh, would just like to share some information. So I'm going to go through some uh, books that have really helped me along my journey, and I'm going to give those away. And then I'm also going to give away uh, some software uh, that I originally paid like $300, $350 for uh, in my travels. And so I think that will really bless some of you guys that are uh, young entrepreneurs. I'm going to give all of it away for free. Uh, so if you miss this uh, broadcast, live that's okay you can always watch the video over and I'm also going to put this on my YouTube page uh, so go to YouTube morrowinvest.com you can uh, just search for it and it's an easy find uh, I'm the only Morrow Invest <laughs> on YouTube and if you'll subscribe uh, you can also join our private investors group if you're interested in talking about business on a regular basis and how to make you more successful we talk about business structure corporate structure uh, taxes, how to make money, ideas, things that are going on trend-wise. There's all kinds of stuff that's going on, and I might touch on some of that as we uh, go along this afternoon. I'm not a huge fan of live video because, you know, stuff can go wrong, dogs can start barking, people can knock on the door, all those kind of things. So, um, but here we go. Let me get a sip of coffee, and uh, then we'll get started. So the first thing I'm going to give away are books. Um, I remember the first probably financial book that I read and I didn't know it was actually the Bible. It gives tons of great stuff if you'll read through Proverbs uh, and actually you know we can we'll touch on this later when I mention one of the books but uh, you know the the Jewish population only makes up less than five percent of the US population I think it's like three percent five percent something like that but yet they make up half of the Ford's 500 list and a lot of that comes by their views of business and uh, money in general. And money is not a bad thing. It's just a tool that we use to accomplish goals. Okay, so uh, when I got started, um, I was, I'll tell you, I've told this before, but I'll tell you again. So I was sitting in my office at my home, uh, in my home office, and um, I had gone back into the lawn service. You know, I used to be a financial advisor. I stopped being a financial advisor. I went back to my... Um, I went back to my roots cutting grass and I took that money and I bought real estate with it and uh, paid off houses left and right. I put all my places on five-year notes. They were all paid off within about seven years and so that passive income coming in every month uh, about three years ago enabled me to retire. And I'm not a, uh, you know, I've told you before, I'm not a straight A student, I'm a C student, but I'm also a list maker and a hard worker, and I'm relatively smart. But you can, uh, I'll tell you the same book that I read. So I'd been cutting grass all day, and um, I was sitting there, and I was making good money, about $45 an hour, uh, 50 bucks an hour, which is really great. Uh, that you could do cutting grass, you can do that in lots of different types of services, whether you're a mechanic or you're a, a painter, or it doesn't matter what you are, if you work for yourself, you can make good money. And I was. And uh, I had a roommate at the time, one of my best friends, and he brought me the rent check. And I literally sat back in my chair and I looked at that rent check and I thought, man, I didn't do anything for this money. <laughs> he just, it's my best friend he's living with me, right? So I immediately already knew that uh, rental income is passive income. So you know I believe in claiming your cash and claiming money that gets given to you. So. I claimed all that and um, you know I went and read a book by Robert Allen called No Money Down in the 2000s and it was about getting houses owner financed and then doing cash out refinances. So if you didn't understand the, what I just said, I'll say it again a little slower and give you a little more information. So a owner financing, before there were banks, there were people. And so people would go to other people and say, hey, could I make payments to you? Uh, and it's not a negative thing. I think a lot of a lot of people have made it into a bad thing, but it's not at all. It's very actually very common in the commercial realm. Uh, but anyway, you can do bond for title. You can do lease option. There's lots of different ways to do it. 
But basically, I would go to individuals and say, you know, hey, I see your house is for sale for 40000 and I want to buy your house. And they are, they're like, great. Well, what they're expecting is for you to start negotiating, you know, and hitting them like, well, I'll give you 32 and then they're going to say no, 38 and then somehow we end up at 35 and then we get the banks involved. Well, what I would do, and part of the way I would get these, is I would say, I'll give you 45 and they would say, well, I, I only want 40000 I say, I know, but I'll give you 45 if you will finance me for five years. So here's the pitch. I would say, not only am I going to give you more than full price, plus there's, you know, I will pay for all the closing. You're not going to have to pay attorney's fees, you know, in an owner finance deal. Uh, you don't have to have appraisals. You don't have to have any of that stuff. All that stuff is tied, when you think of home buying, all of that stuff is tied to the banks and the underwriters. They want appraisals. They want to get comps and CMA reports from the realtors and all those kind of things. I'm just an individual investor. I can make an offer. I can offer you whatever you whatever we agree on. I, you know, we could agree to pay you five dollars every other Tuesday for a hundred years. It doesn't matter. We can create the terms we want. So you have a lot more flexibility, and you do get told no a lot. So don't get you know, don't think, oh, I'm just going to go make a ton of money getting people to owner finance me the house. Basically, what you're saying is, hey, give me your house. We're going to sign the title into my name, and then we're going to record a mortgage just like a bank would. So instead of it being Regions Bank or, you know, some uh, Wells Fargo or whatever, it's you. The, the, the person that is selling me the house will say Mr. Jones. So Mr. Jones is actually going to show, instead of writing Regions Bank, it, we will write Mr. Jones. And you go to a closing attorney and you do a closing just like you would if you were buying a house. It is the exact same process. The only difference is uh, that I'm making payments now to Mr. Jones. Now Mr. Jones, by doing it this way, is protected under the um, foreclosure laws. So if I stop paying him, not only does he get his property back, plus the ten, twelve, fifteen thousand dollars worth of repairs and upgrades that I've done to the property. He also uh you know, he can also come after me and foreclose on the property and get his property back. Now I thankfully I've been blessed and I've never had a default ever. I've never defaulted on a debt that I haven't paid. And so that's been really good. Uh that's with a lot of hard work and a lot of blessings. So um so I sat there and I read this book called No Money Down in the 2000s by Robert Allen. And he basically states, get a house that you get owner financed, get the house fixed up and repaired, which I learned how to do a lot of stuff. I'm, I'm not the best at painting or things, but there's things you're good at. And there's, you know, I find some things you don't like to do. Like I'm a decent, okay guy that'll do tile, but it is much easier when you get to the point where you can just hire a professional to do these things, which thankfully I'm, that's where I'm at now. But when I started, I was the one laying the flooring. I was the one painting. I was the one doing the plumbing and all that kind of stuff. So, so we uh, we get that person in place. So now you have the place under contract. You have the title in your name now. You now own the house. You're now making payments to Mr. Jones. You now get a renter in place, so seven eight hundred dollars a month that then starts paying that off. And then you do what's called a cash out refinance. So say the value of that property repaired, after it's been repaired, say the value of that property is $100,000. Uh, I can then say I'm into the house now for $50,000. I bought it for uh, I bought it for forty, and we're financing it. And over the next five years, I'm eventually going to pay forty five for the house, but right now I'm out forty in financing, so I still haven't put out any money. And then I've paid maybe $1,500 for closing and some fees and things. And then I've put maybe $5,000 into flooring and paint. And those. It's a lot cheaper when you're doing it yourself. So now I've got, say, a house that I've in on paper have $50,000. And that neighborhood, that house is worth $100,000. I now have a $50,000 worth of equity. Now, you're going to find very quickly that banks are not going to give you that money. Uh, banks... Um, really the majority of the loans that banks are going to do are FHA loans or first-time homebuyer loans. They want you to live in the house. In fact, bank after bank will tell you very quickly, we do not do non-owner-occupied investment properties. So they don't want to 
fund you for investment properties. So you have to learn how to do creative financing to get these things. Now it can be through personal funds, it can be you can get the place owner financed, you can do a bond for title, you can do a lease option where you rent it with the option to buy. There's just dozens of ways you can you can actually buy and sell the notes, you can do a land trust. I mean different people do it different ways and there's lots of ways to do it. So uh, that just depends on how much money you can get from who, how long, what the terms are to get money. You know, I, in the beginning, I literally put stuff on credit cards. So I had about forty, fifty thousand dollars worth of available credit on some platinum cards, and I would buy a house and get it owner financed. Again, I've got no money out other than the fifteen hundred dollars worth of closing, and then I would just go to Home Depot and buy. You know, I'd walk through the house and do a punch list, which is everything that I know that I'm going to do to the place, and I would go on and measure for flooring or light covers or fans, whatever. And when you're doing rentals, you already know you're doing the same thing on every place. So every place actually gets easier because you already know you're painting the walls Killiam beige. You already know you're doing semi-gloss white trim. You already know you're doing white on white eggshell in the bathroom. You already know uh, what type of fan you buy you know, for those rental properties. And so it gets easier. So by the 10th house, you know, I could walk into Home Depot just once and just go down the aisle and buy everything I knew I needed, as well as any kind of bits and pieces that were left over from the last property, you make this next rental look the exact same, right? So that gallon and a half of extra Killian Beige paint I had, I just used that on the next house, right? So it's, it helps with waste. You're not wasting materials. Uh, and I like rentals a lot better, uh, not only for the tax purposes for passive income, but also because you're not going to, um, you know, you're not going to have something different every single time. You know, if you're trying to keep up with what the trend is in the neighborhood or, or that area, you know, you might have to bring in uh, a professional that does home staging and all those different things. And so I, we don't have to deal with that, right? If you're just paying, if you're doing a rental property, you're doing the same thing every single time uh, and it rents. Whereas if you're doing that for a um, for a home you're trying to flip, it has to be what are what's everybody else doing? What's trendy right now? And there's some things that are trendy that you know I don't really like, but they're trending right now. So you know you do it. Like I'll give you one as uh, concrete countertops. I have seen people pay thousands and thousands of dollars for concrete countertops in in four hundred five hundred thousand dollar houses. I don't think they look good. I I just don't. But they're trendy right now, so people are doing them. So there's that. Uh, so um, anyway, so then you do a cash out refinance. So you go to your investor. Uh, you know, you go to one of your investors, and it's a lot easier pitch. Then you say, "Hey, investor, I already have this house that is worth a hundred thousand dollars. I have already bought it. I've already repaired it, and I already have it cash flowing. I already have a tenant in place paying me, right?" And so it makes it a lot easier then when you go to that investor because you're not going to them and being like, hey, I got this vacant property that it looks like trash and a hoarder lived in it and it's terrible and has holes in the walls and rats. And, you know, it, that's not what you're telling them. You're telling them, hey, I already, here's the after thing. You can drive by and look. Here is a already turnkey operation that is already fixed and repaired with a tenant in place. Here's the lease. Right, and I want to pull out not all of my equity. I've got fifty thousand in equity. I'm not trying to pull out all of my equity, but to do some other projects and to pay some things off, I would like to pull out twenty five thousand dollars in equity. This will bring you to a seventy five percent loan to value ratio. So you know, your seventy five percent of your money is now tied up, right? But now you have twenty five thousand dollars sitting in your account. How much is that loan taxable? Zero. We've talked about this before. Loans are not taxable. So yes, I do technically have to pay that money back, but my tenant is in place and my tenant is paying that money back Okay, each month. And so I got to stick $25,000 worth of tax-free money into my pocket. Okay, And so this is what I learned in that book by Robert Allen, No Money Down in the 2000s. And then I started reading more and more books and, and I, uh, I got Donald Trump's Art of the Deal and then I got uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad and The Millionaire Next Door and you know How to Win and Influence People, Dale Carnegie's book. So you start reading all these books and uh, I know that's a really long intro to give away some books, but 
I'm kind of long-winded at times. So um, it's amazing that I would find people and they would pick up a financial book like this one here. So this one says, Why you want? Why We Want You to Be Rich. And it's by Donald Trump and Robert Kiyosaki. And I would have people and they would thumb through it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And then they would look at the back here. And the back here says twenty four ninety five, And they would be like, Wah. and they'd put it back on the shelf. I'm not paying $25. And I'm like, you won't pay 20 You would You would pay $25 for a meal at Texas Roadhouse or Chili's or whatever. You would spend more than $25 on appetizers this week. You would spend more than $25 to have your Starbucks coffee this week. But you won't spend $25 on a book that will teach you something, that will teach you how to retire, that will teach you how to be tax advantaged. Uh, that doesn't make any sense to me. But for those of you out there that are watching or interested in those type of things, the information is out there. It's readily available. And I want to help you uh, because these things helped me. And we all benefit if the tax base, if it, we we want more rich people. Now, this some of you might not understand what I mean, but you want more wealthy people because wealthy people pay higher taxes, they own businesses, they create jobs, and they also buy, they're the ones that spend money. They buy luxury items, right? So luxury cars, all those things are taxed. And, and our country, half of our country is not working. So I, our, we are so rich in America that 300 million Americans, 150 million are receiving some kind of benefit, some type of check, right? So we have, we have 150 million people because the other 150 are so productive that they do not have to work. Now, I'm not getting into anything political. Those are just the numbers. You're, feel free to look them up. Okay, so what I want to do is uh, give away a couple of books. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about each book and then I'll give it away. And I'm getting my protein in. I've got my protein shake as my coffee. <laughs> Alright, so this is a great book by Truett Cathy uh, called Eat More Chicken. And it's the, it's the Chick-fil-A story. And it's kind of an autobiography as well as about the business. This is a great, great book, and um, you don't have to be from the South to appreciate it, and, and you also do not have to be a Christian, uh, which I am, and Mr. Kathy is, you don't have to be a Christian to appreciate truth. So you will find as you go, uh, like if we surveyed 100 of the richest people in the world or whatever, there you're going to find that there's about 95% is the same. They, they believe the same things. We're more alike than we are different, guys. And so uh, just because um, I'm a person of faith doesn't mean you have to be in order to receive the same benefits and blessings. Okay, so I think that this is a great book, and that's why I'm telling you about it. So uh, from a business standpoint, uh, he started a business over in Atlanta, and uh, he, he knew how to work hard. That's what he knew how to do. He also had a passion for... Uh, the orphans. And uh, so he and his wife, as they got more and more successful, and they bought into Chick-fil-A and things were going well, uh, and Chick-fil-A has some really interesting things that, uh, that I didn't know before reading this book. For instance, um, you know, you cannot just buy into a franchise for Chick-fil-A. Like if you, you could own a hundred Burger Kings, but you can only own one Chick-fil-A. So if, if you go to a Chick-fil-A, one of the reasons why Chick-fil-A's are so clean and everybody is just on top of their game and the place is just rocking and rolling, as far as the fast food industry goes, I mean, it is just far and away, uh, you know, a better quality uh, experience, you know, from the cleanliness of the store to the, uh, you know, how nice the staff is, you know, it's a really great organization. So you'll find pretty quickly that the owner of that location, that franchise, works there. That owner of that franchise is actually there working. So when you want to go to a Chick-fil-A, uh, you're going to find the actual owner is there. Okay, So th th that's one of the things. They also will not allow people to make a loan 
to get the money to put down for the franchise. They have to have this money to invest. So they have to already be pretty successful and committed, and then they have to commit to actually be there. So it's, it's kind of neat. So, uh, of course, Chick-fil-A has uh, just blown up across the country. Uh, they're all over the place. Um, in rare instances, there are a few uh, people that are allowed to have two, uh, two locations, but, again, it's kind of rare. Uh, so I'm going to give this book away for free. Uh, this book cost me 20 bucks. Uh, but I'll give it for free. If you will uh, comment below this video or send me a private message, either on Instagram, on LinkedIn, on Facebook, or email, just however you want to get in contact with me, and say, hey, I want the Truett Cathy uh, Chick-fil-A storybook that's, that's yours. And this is actually you know, my book. This is the one that I read. A very easy read. Uh, it's, not, it's not difficult. In fact, most of the books that I'm going to show you are not difficult because... Uh, that's how what a kind of reader I am. I actually, and I've told you this before, I actually love Audible through Amazon. Um, I can buy a book, and while I'm running around looking at properties or just driving or, or exercising, I can be listening to uh, an audio book. And I love audio books, but these are just happen to be a few that I've read that I'm trying to give away. So if you're interested in this, what we will do is we'll just figure out the postage and uh, for media mail and I'll send you what that is and as soon as you either Square Reader or Facebook Cash or any number of other ways that we can get money to each other if you'll send me the shipping and handling that I tell you uh, it will be for the book I'll stick it in the mail send it on to you okay I've got actually two copies of why we want you to be rich this is by Donald Trump and Robert Kiyosaki. Donald Trump is now our president. He was not when he wrote this book, but uh, you know, no matter what you think of Donald Trump, uh, you know, I've heard some people say, "Oh, well, his daddy gave him money." Well, guys, it's hard. it's one thing to be given money, but it is a lot harder to keep money. So yeah, he got given a million dollars, but he was he's actually pretty smart and has been very successful in the real estate world as well as the branding world. We know of Trump Tower and Trump T Hotel and Casino and he has branded his name very, very well and that's part of his worth. Robert Kiyosaki has done the same thing with his Rich Dad Poor Dad series. He comes out with a book about every two years, maybe even less than that, maybe every year. So if you ever go read a, 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 a Rich Dad Poor Dad book, about 80% of it, maybe even 90% of it, is the same book. <laughs> it's brilliant. He writes the same book, and he probably uses ghostwriters. Uh, if you don't know what that is, it's just someone you pay to write your book uh, for you. And he always says, I'm not a best, uh, Robert Kiyosaki always says, I'm not a best writing author, I'm a best selling author. And I always liked that line. So uh, Kiyosaki has some very uh, strict uh, guidelines and there's they're very common sense. He talks about how his rich dad was a, um, uh, I believe, a teacher and uh, highly educated, but didn't make any money. And then there was a guy that worked down at the sugar cane fields that owned all the tenants' uh, housing, and everybody thought he was such a terrible person <laughs> because they rented from him and th the rich the rich dad would say, "You need to go get your education and." 401k and benefits and all that and he says well it didn't work for my father my father is you know in his uh, later years and is still working for the man and not making any money whereas you can work for yourself which is what I promote all the time on this page is working for yourself figuring out some business that you can run it will make you the most tax advantaged if you work for yourself and you can not only can you help people but you can change your life and if you're doing rental income, that's passive income, which is taxed half as much as earned income, and taxes is the number one thing you pay. So, this book will be a lot of repeat uh, on, you know, the st other stuff that they say in that book, uh, in his other books, as as well as uh, Donald Trump. You know, both of them are going to reference their other books pretty regularly. So, if you've, if you know, I would mainly suggest going out and buying Rich Dad Poor Dad and maybe buying Donald Trump's Art of the Deal, uh, which I believe I already gave away. But these two books are really good. Uh, it is good to continue your education. And so, again, 
same thing. I'll send these off. Uh, I've got two copies, so let me know. Uh, got another book here by Dave Ramsey. I love me some Dave Ramsey. He is uh, just a straight shooter and does very common sense. Two plus two equals four. I love the math that he does. You know, when when people are saying I don't have the money, and he checks their budget, and yet they're you know frivolously spending money on all kinds of things, and he can just cut through the fat to say, well, you know, you're broke because of how you live your life and your spending and all. So, this book uh, here is called Entre Leadership. It is a actually a course that he does. Uh, you can actually go to the Dave Ramsey website, pay for. Uh, this course, uh, I believe they do it maybe once or twice a year, and uh, I've not been through this course, but I have been through Financial Peace and Dave Ramsey's course, and actually Dave Ramsey's course is what I modeled my uh, Udemy.com course called How to Be Financially Free. I modeled it, of course, because you don't have to reinvent the wheel, you know. Uh, it's just like a diet. Eat right, exercise, do everything in moderation. There you go. There's your diet. <laughs> so, uh, financial education is the same way. So, you know, you, there's only two things you can do in any budget. It doesn't matter if you have a hundred million dollar business or you're only making a thousand dollars a month. And that is, you can either uh, reduce expenses or increase income. Those are the only two things that you can do on any budget. Okay, so uh, Dave Ramsey does a great job. Common sense. He still has his radio show. There are actually a lot of free tools. On uh, his website, if you'll go, you can download PDFs of budgets, of all kinds of stuff for free. Uh, they have a money manager app, lots of really great stuff. And uh, I would love, love to give this book away to someone. Uh, again, this book is twenty nine. Uh, excuse me, twenty six dollars in a, in the U.S. Uh, so I paid twenty six for it. I'll give it to you for free. Just we'll find out what shipping and handling is to your address, and we'll ship that over. Let's look at another one. Here's my book by Robert Allen, No Money Down in the 2000s. Now, you might think that uh, because we're now into 2017 that there's nothing that you can learn from this book. That is absolutely not true. Uh, obviously, some of the laws and some of the things have changed since then, but uh, just like Dale Carnegie's book um, or Sin Tzu's book, you know, The Art of War, even though those, even the Bible written two thousand years ago or more, some of those some of those passages go back four or five thousand years, uh, four thousand years, they still are true today, right? That you can read and it's just like you're reading it today. Uh, what's going on in our world? So there's a, about ninety five percent of this is going to be applicable to uh, what you're doing, and it'll also give you a great base uh, for real estate if you're looking to start learning about creative financing. So. Uh, I really enjoyed this book. This is this is one of the ones that got me started. Uh, learned a lot from this book, so I hope you guys will check that out. Um, let's see. I have a couple of books here that have been given to me that I have honestly not read, um, but I will still give them away for free if you would like. Uh, they're all. This one is Scott Anderson, Think Like a Billionaire. Scott Anderson, Think Like a Billionaire. This is Hidden Millionaire, 12 Principles Uncovering the Entrepreneur in Youth. And this is Advertising Profits from Home. Okay, so both, all three of those are similarly themed. And uh, if you're interested in those, please let me know. Now, let me take a drink, and then we're going to talk about software. These two software... Uh, are from Clear Mountain Software. And so I paid a few years ago, this was uh, probably eight or nine years ago, I actually paid for $10,000 worth of training. And I I've told this story before. I'll give you the really short version. Uh, I went to the Get Motivated seminar, and they had a lot of different speakers. And one of the speakers was James Smith. And I didn't know then that he would one day be my friend and that I would follow he and his family in a lot of the things they do. So uh, James Smith said, hey, trailers are good, good. mobile home parks, billboards, self-storage, assisted living, adult daycare. I mean, he just went over all kinds of stuff, and he said it in a really colorful way. If you know James, you can look up some of his YouTube videos, James Smith. 
Uh, he is a very entertaining speaker. And uh, so I went into the corner, of course, and gave my credit card to somebody in the corner. And they did a three-day weekend. I did that three-day weekend for 50 bucks. And the pitch was, if you, are, if you come all three days, we'll give you your $50 back. So on the end of the second day, they, give you, they gave out a sheet, and it was a pitch for you to pay for more training and on all kinds of what things on real estate, asset protection, taxes, uh, tax liens, uh, uh, billboards, mobile home bars, assisted living, just the, the full gamut down in Orlando for a week. So I did. It ended up being one of the best weeks of my life. Not only did I learn a ton of information that set me on a new path, this path that we're on, the retirement path, uh, the passive income path, the ha pay half as much in taxes path, uh, all that. Uh, but it was uh, just wonderful uh, meeting all the people. So I made a lot of lifelong friends at that event and would gladly spend that money again to do similar events. And actually, you know, that's part of what I do now is I have my mentorship, which is $2,000, and that's one-on-one -on -one training with me. And then I have my Udemy course as well as my private investors group where people can come and learn uh, about any type of business, not just real estate, but learning the the foundation of business. So it doesn't matter which business you're doing. Again, I've said before, it doesn't matter if you are a neurosurgeon or a plumber, you're still providing a service for a fee. So when you come down to corporate structure and taxes and what's what you can write off and what you can't and all those kind of things and how you market your business, all those things uh, I can help you with. And uh, so we do. So it's a pretty, pretty fun, exciting group and it's a really great value too. I only charge a dollar a day and I think that's pretty amazing. You know, you've got all these millionaire mindset groups and these guys just talk over you and everything. I'm talking about real world making you six figures a year and showing you how to do it, breaking those down to daily goals so that you can do it. So anyway, I'm getting off on a side, but just want to tell you. So during this process, uh, one of the things that I bought was software. Okay, so first we have the boss small business productivity suite and let me tell you let me tell you the good and the bad this is an accounting software mainly i did not use it for that and so i'm being honest with you telling you what i use it for honestly quickbooks is about top of the line there's not much you're going to buy better than quickbooks but uh this the the reason you would want this boss software is uh not only does it have literally uh, tens of thousands of dollars worth of documents in it uh, but it also has calculators and it also has um, it also has a a business plan writer which is great because it will help you when you're uh, going to talk to other investors or you're going to go talk to a bank you're going to say hey this is my project and this is why you should give me money you need something like this that is going to give you a good base foundation as well as can you imagine if you paid an attorney for every little thing that you created it, it adds up very very quickly right and so in this especially since it's free I'm giving it away free and the reason I'm doing that I'm going to tell you so this is from 2015 so I'm cleaning out the last of my inventory uh, of the boss software I have one two three four five I have about 12 copies left of the Boss Accounting Suite productivity software, again, for free. Uh, I don't know that you're going to get a better deal than that. I paid $350 for it when I bought it, uh, so that's a pretty good value, I think, uh, free. So you're just going to pay the uh, probably 5 to $10 shipping and handling, and I'll be glad to send this to you. It needs to be on a uh, Microsoft computer if you have a... Apple computer, just call the 800 number and they can help you set up a, uh, a dual platform where you can still run the software. Okay, so that's the boss software. And then, second, I have used the crap out of this. Uh, this is the React Pro real estate software. So, this does a couple of different things. This actually has a uh, lead generation program in it that if you want to subscribe to, you don't have to, but you can subscribe to it once you install it and it'll send you. Uh, leads on properties that are hitting the market before they hit the MLS, which is really, really great. Uh, also, this, this, what I really loved about this is, say you're doing a, uh, you're trying to do a, a flip 
uh, on a property. This has a flip uh, calculator in it, and it, it it really tuned me up so that I could be more specific about all the charges and cost. And it is an exhaustive list of um, things that you put in there, things that I wouldn't have otherwise thought about. And you can put, put them in this, and it'll tell you if it's a go or no-go scenario, meaning a buy or a don't buy and a go or no go and it will tell you what your profit margins are what you're actually going to flip all that kind of stuff not only that it has tens of thousands of dollars worth of documents in it so you have your lease option your bond for title your rental and your rental lease all of that stuff approved in all 50 states you do not have to have a lawyer to create these things for you it's all here already that is pretty darn amazing uh, it also has all your amortization schedules and calculators which is really cool uh, it also does one more thing that is I just think is great. Uh, this was probably my favorite thing is when you put an address in, say you're, this will keep track of not only all your contacts for your investing uh, in real estate, but also say, say I put in a property and I put in the address, it will automatically pull all the property records from the county uh, public county uh, website and in, input them. So you just put in an address and automatically you know it's a three bedroom, two bath, it's 1,250 square feet, built in 1978, right? And you just go down the line and it fills in the blanks for you. And you can put before and after pictures, all that kind of stuff. So again, I paid $350 for this when I uh, went through my real estate training uh, 10 years ago, eight years ago. I think this is a really, really great value. Uh, again, I'll give it to you for free just for... Um, you know, just for the shipping and handling. Okay. All right. Now there was one more thing I wanted to talk to you guys about. Oh, accessories. <laughs> I want to give away some accessories. We're going to do uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas, and I want to talk about I want to talk about those real quick, and then we're going to talk about some volunteering. Now this this might be kind of silly, but um, my mother is a big encourager, and there used to actually be a store that sold just accessories. And what I mean when I say accessories is, see if you can see this here. See it says leadership. A leader stands out by the nature of their commitment and the integrity of their character, right? And so my office, which was at the time the nicest office in the whole place because I had an aunt, my Aunt Donna worked at uh, either Kaiser or uh, Lazy Boy. And so my mother, who's a designer, as well as my Aunt Donna, who's a designer in her own right, went together and while I was off working a deal one day, they went to my office and stripped my office and bought about $4,000 worth of desk and chairs and side tables and all and made my office super, super nice. Uh, it was the nicest one uh, when I was a financial advisor in the office, including our OSJ manager. It was nicer than theirs. Uh, but I have several of these. I have this one that says leadership. I have this one here that says life is a journey. It's a beautiful picture here. See that? Also have this one here, the power of a leader, all all of these are going to have to do with being a leader. <laughs> Go figure. So here's one, the power of, of a leader. A uh, true leader are not those that strive to be first, but those who are first to strive to give their success to their team. Right? So we've got all these kind of things. We've got another one here. This is the essence of persistence. Another beautiful piece here. And these are also he kind of heavy as well. They're, they're really nice frames, glass. And then here's one with an eagle here that says a true leader has the confidence to stand alone, the courage to make tough decisions, and the compassion to listen to those in need. The essence of a leadership, right? So I'll be giving away those for free. Just, um, again, message me and tell me that, hey, I want those. And uh, just send me a message and we'll figure out what address you're at. And uh, we will figure out uh, what what postage will be and I'll get those mailed out within a day or two to you as soon as, as, soon as I receive uh, some cashola from your again Square, PayPal, whatever. There's lots of ways that we can do that and we'll get you that. Lastly I want to talk about the reason for the season and so we've got the holidays coming up in November and December and I want to tell you something that's kind of near and dear to my heart um, 
and I talk about this on a regular basis, especially if you guys know me. I talk about how blessed we are. So if you go to the globalrichlist.com, I've mentioned this before, you go to the globalrichlist.com and put in where you are, which most of you guys are going to be in America, and you put in the average your average income. So if you just put in $34,000 a year, which is not a lot, uh, you put in 34000 you are in the top 1% in the world. You are richer than 99% of the rest of the world. Guys, we are so richly blessed in this country. So I want you to not only, uh, I'm not saying that in a braggart way, I want you to be humble about that and know how blessed you are. And so we also can be one of the most giving people. So one of the things that happens as you're driving around on a regular basis and going into areas where you don't necessarily live to find uh, deals and to find properties and sometimes, you know, uh, some of you guys don't know this, but you know, a lot of times I'll go and I'll look at properties that I'm not interested in, but just because I, I have other investors or friends throughout the country that are in interested in those properties, and I'll go check them out for them. And I do a, uh, you know, I'll do research for other investors. You know, I can do a full spread for like a thousand dollars, where I do a full research on the property, what I think the uh, you know, the go, no go is what I would put in the place, go, go on and bank a punch list for all the repairs needed to do in uh, pictures, walkthrough video, all that kind of stuff. And it really gives an investor, especially if they're not here, really gives them um, a, a bird, like, a, like if they were there personally walking through the property and I point out the good, the bad and the ugly. And so that's normally about a thousand dollars. So uh, but going through all these places, one of the things that I see a lot of that you might not even realize is the poverty. There is a lot of poverty and a lot of homeless people. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, I'm a Christian. And so there's only a few genuine commands in the new Testament. And, and one of those commands is to take care of the elderly and the children and, uh, the poor. And, you know, God says the, 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 the poor are the ones that are going to inherit heaven, you know, the poor in spirit. And so we are so richly blessed. It is our obligation and duty uh, to take care of these people as best we can. And so as the winter months get coming, I don't know where you are in America right now, but I'm in Alabama. So we have a kind of a cold wet, right? So uh, where we are, you know, 50 degrees might feel like 35 because it's so humid. Okay, and you can imagine, uh, you know, just how cold you get from running from your car to inside at your work or whatnot. And so we want to make sure that we give these people uh, blankets and, and food and, and monetary help if we can. I would tell you to research a couple of good places. I really like the Salvation Army. There's a lot of other places, the Red Cross, a lot of uh, churches and civic groups that go out and help. I would ask you to go right now, look in your closet, and I'm not talking about throwing rags away. I'm talking about look through your closet, and you probably have 10 jackets, 5 jackets. You probably have a walk-in closet with more stuff than you can possibly. You probably have containers that you've got under your bed and in your storage building and all those things, all that, all that extra stuff that you don't really need, right? I encourage you to uh, first go through those things and give. Give those things away to people that are in need. Now, you, I, you know, I try to tell people to be careful because you don't necessarily want to just walk up into a group of homeless people and start giving away stuff, money, or any of that kind of thing. You can, but I would not advise that. I would tell you to contact an organization, whether, again, it be the Red Cross, um, the uh, Salvation Army, and say, what do you need? What is something you need? And, you know, that you don't just give them whatever. Like they might say, we really, they really need socks. They really need blankets. They really need jackets. We really need some volunteers for the soup kitchen, right? Find out what their needs are. And guys, you are going to be so much happier when you give. Not only when when you give of your overflow, but guys, some of you might only have two jackets. Some of you might, it might be sacrificial for you to give. I encourage you to give anyway. Uh, guys, uh, the man upstairs that gives away the blessings, he is going to bless you. Uh, and, you, you know, no matter what you believe, the world is set up that you reap what you sow. And I promise you, when you are 
serving others and sowing good seeds into other people's lives, you are going to reap the rewards. You're going to sleep well at night. Uh, I'm not about a health and wealth gospel. I'm just telling you that from my own experience, I know that some of the hardest days I've ever had are made better when you're volunteering and when you're giving away. So I encourage you guys to do those things. Guys, please let me know if you have any questions uh, about the software, uh, about the books giving away, uh, about our private investors group, our Udemy course, How to Be Financially Free, which, by the way, you get for free if you're part of the investor group, which is just a dollar a day. You go, you get the $200 Udemy course built into that for free. Uh, and uh, guys... We are daily creating passive income streams. We are helping investors make money. We are helping people save on their taxes. Uh, it is uh, very exciting, and I hope you'll be a part of it. And guys, get out there this uh, November and December and on beyond that and volunteer on a regular basis. Help those in need. Uh, guys, I hope you have an awesome Sunday afternoon. I hope you enjoyed uh, this time sitting at my kitchen table talking with me. And uh, let me know if you need anything. Hope you guys have an awesome day. Bye-bye.